Hello everyone, how are you? This is the second and final part of this looping cut animation tutorial. So if you haven't seen part 1, watch that one first. Today we are gonna animate the lights and the tail and then we are gonna make the shadow and the compositing. You can download the blend file for free, link in the description. Ok, let's continue. To fix these spheres going through the mesh, let's apply the particles. Click Make Instances Real and take all of these to a new folder. And hide the particle system. Now my particles are objects, so I can change a couple of individual colors, since here we have some spheres with the same color that are next to each other. Select the object you want to change, make it a single user copy, and turn the material to a single user copy as well. Leave only the color you want, I chose yellow for this specific light bulb, and we don't need the object info node anymore. Let's do the same with another one, but this time I'm gonna go with a red color. And I repeated the process to make a green and a blue material, and I changed the color of some light bulbs until I liked the way the colors were distributed. And now if you want another light bulb to be red for example, make it a single user copy, but use this red material we already have instead of the random colors material. At the back my colors lacked variety too, so I also changed some of the materials off camera. Gonna show you my final colors in a second. And now rotate and move the spheres that are touching the cut. And after I adjusted the position and colors of the spheres, here it is. Now it's time to animate the lights and add the glow effect. Here I have one of the light bulb material and we need to add a mix shader node. Connect the mix node to the mix shader node, duplicate the color ramp node and reset it by pressing the backspace key. Add a noise texture node and connect it to the color ramp node and connect the color ramp node to the mix shaders factor socket. Add an emission node and connect it to the bottom socket in the mix shader node. And connect the object info node to the noise texture node. And in this node is where the animation is gonna take place. We're gonna use drivers for that. If you want to read more about drivers and expressions, there's a link to the Blender manual in the description box. I'm gonna write the expression hash frame slash 15, but I ended up choosing 20 instead of 15. Let's hit play, move the color ramps color stops and change it to constant. To get a glow effect enable bloom, let's make the emission brighter. You could change the color of the emission node or even make it black. We could plug the color ramp into the emission node and that way we'll get the same random colors for our glow. These are my final values for the bloom. Now we need to copy these nodes to animate the other light bulbs that are using a different material. We don't need these colors because we're using this green color for this material, so connect this one where the random color ramp is plugged in. And we need to write the function again. And now we have to do the same for all the other materials that we used in the light bulbs. You could even use different numbers in the expression for each material, so some of the light bulbs have a different speed. And then I moved the color stops in this color ramp node in all the materials. Now it's time to animate the tail. First I'm gonna take the 3D cursor to the end of the tail and add a bone. 
scale it, rotate it, move it until it's inside the tail. Let's show the bones so we can see them clearly. Go to edit mode and I want to move the tip a bit. Enable x-ray mode shaft to see whether the bone is inside the tail or not. And now with the tip of the bone selected, extrude. Make sure the bone is inside the tail. And when you're happy with the placement, let's extrude again and place this new bone. Take your time to rig the entire tail and make sure you have an even number of bones. In my case, I used 12 bones. Back to object mode, select the tail, press shift and select the armature. Ctrl P and parent with automatic weights. Let's test whether we parent it correctly. And everything seems fine. To parent the cable, select it, select the armature too, and this time parent with empty groups. And here we have both the tail and the cable parent to our armature. I want the cable to mimic the movement of the tail, so let's select the tail, also select the cable, go to weight paint mode and go to weight, transfer weights. And in source, choose by name. And now if we click each vertex group, we can see the weight of each bone. In this bone, the weight is off since it's also been transferred to this side of the cable. Let's fix it by painting with zero weights. An easier way to do this is in edit mode. Select all of these in x-ray mode. Take the weight to zero and hit assign. And repeat the same with the other bones just to be safe. Let's see, and now that part of the cable is set to zero weight in each bone as you can see. And let's check how the armature moves. Now, how to attach the light bulbs so they also move along with the cable. Select a light bulb and select the armature. Go to Post Mode and choose the bone that is closer to this light bulb, Ctrl P and Parent to Bone. And now the tail, the cable and that light bulb move together. Now we need to repeat this process for all the light bulbs that are supposed to move, not the ones at the front for example, only the ones around the tail. Let's test it. And let's repeat. Select a light bulb and a bone, go to post mode, parent, and let's repeat the process. You could even parent one light bulb to two bones if needed. After I finished the animation and fixed some weight paint problems, I moved and parent some more light bulbs, I will show you that later in the video. I'm gonna parent all of these light bulbs of camera so you do the same. Now, how to make the tail move like this without animating every single bone? We're gonna use something called constraints. In post mode, select the first and the second bone and hit Ctrl Shift Z and choose Damped Track. Now select the second and the third bone. Press Ctrl Shift C, Damped Track and repeat.
and the last bone leave it as it is. If you select a bone you can change the influence and you can change it at any time even after we animate the armature. I chose 0.3 for every bone but you could choose different values for each bone to create a gradual effect. Now rotate the base bone and everything moves as you can see. Let's go to camera view. Go to rest position and let's animate this. Select the first bone and insert a rotation keyframe. Go to frame 20, pose position and let's rotate the bone a bit. Add a rotation keyframe and here we have it. Let's duplicate the first keyframe to frame 40. And here we have our loop. Let's make the animation a bit more noticeable, so let's rotate a bit more. Let's see the loop. And you can also change the values here, or you could also animate some of the other bones as well. At the back there's a pointy vertex, so let's see which bone is casting the problem. There's an unselected vertex right here. Let's see. Now we need to move the camera so we don't cut the tail. I want to align the cut a bit more towards the center and I'm gonna use some of the composition guides for that. Now we need to fix the cable's weight paint a little more until the cable's stretching looks a bit more natural. You can try the blur brush as well. Let's select the faces that are causing the problem. And use the smooth tool and change the values until it looks better. I want to smooth it a bit more.
and with the materials I think it looks decent. Now let's fix the other part of the cable that is giving us problems. But this time I'm gonna fix it in edit mode. I'm gonna select all of these and take their weight to zero. Let's see. Let's change the weight of these edge loops to 1. Let's see. And now I'm gonna make some changes to the geometry. Enable proportional editing And I'm gonna slide this edge loop using the double G shortcut. And now let's do the same with this edge loop. Let's see. And now with the materials, it looks okay. It doesn't have to be perfect anyway. Now I need to move some light bulbs closer to the cable and I had to parent some light bulbs like we did at the beginning of the video so they move along with the cable. I need to scale this one since it is between the cables. Now we're getting ready to render, but as you can see our loop animation stutters, it's not seamless. To fix it, duplicate the first keyframe and put it before that first keyframe. And even though our last keyframe is in frame 40, let's end the animation at frame 47 because the damped track constraint adds a bit of a bouncy effect, so we need a couple more frames for the tail to go back to its position. And now it's fixed. First, I'm gonna render the background separately. Create a folder and render as a PNG. This is my resolution, and we could take the sampling to 100. Hide everything, and click Render Image since we need only one still image for the background. Let's save it. Now I want to render the animation without the background, so enable transparent. Remember to enable set passes before rendering the grease pencil, and choose a name for the files that we're gonna create, and render as a PNG with an alpha channel, and hit render animation. Now we need to render the shadow. Add a plane, I suggest you save this file separately because we're about to make some changes to this scene and add a sun. Hide the other light we have and set the sun's strength to file. And now rotate until you like the placement of the shadow. Personally, I think that without the cable and the light bulbs, the shadow looks cleaner and more simple. Here I made this easy material for the plane 
and set the blend mode to alpha blend. And if you change the value of the black color, the shadow will be more or less opaque. Now we need to hide the cut in a way that it still gives us a shadow. In cycles, you could simply add a shadow catcher, but in EV we need to remove the cut's material and make a new one. Choose transparent BSDF and set the blend mode to alpha blend. And pick the same material for the tail. Make a new folder to render the shadow and give a name to the files we're gonna render. Remember to keep the transparent background enabled. Before rendering, I want to save my project as a new one, so now I have a separate file for this shadow catcher we've created. And now render animation. Now it's time to merge everything together, the background, the animation and the shadow. There are two ways to do it, in the compositing workspace or in a video editing software. I used the second option since it allowed me to change the blending mode of the shadow. I used DaVinci Resolve, but we can use Blender's video editor. First, I'm gonna show you how to do it in the compositing workspace real quick and then in the video editing workspace. Delete this node and add an image node. Select all the cut frames, add another image node and choose the background image and add another image node and choose the shadow frames. Add an alpha over node and plug the cut animation into the second image socket and the shadow to the first one. Duplicate the alpha over node and connect the background. Set the pre-multiply in the first alpha over node to 1, so the white borders disappear. Choose a name, and now we can render it as a video. This video will get exported as an MKB file, but in the video editing chapter I will show you how to change your settings to export as an MP4. If you do the compositing in a new file, remember to change the color management and the render setting. Hit render animation. And here we have it. And if I set my video player to repeat, we can see the loop animation. But what happens if I want to render a longer loop animation? Enable cyclic in the image nodes. And now if we extend the range, the animation continues and repeats. What I don't like about this method is that I wanted to change the blending mode of the shadow and I couldn't figure out a simple way of doing it. But in the video sequencer, you can. So let's go to the video editing workspace. Let's remove this area to have more space, move to frame 1 and let's add the footage. The cut animation has to be at the top on channel 3. The shadow footage goes on channel 2, below the cut animation. And the background goes below everything on channel 1. And we need to extend it. Select the shadow footage and set the blend mode to soft light and now it looks softer and it blends with the background color. Remember to check the frame range. This time I'm gonna set my settings to render as MP4. If you add audio, you should choose an audio codec as well. And render animation. If you wanted to make a longer loop animation like we did in the compositing when we set the notes to cyclic, simply select all the tracks, set the playhead at the end and copy paste. And you'd need to change the frame range to the double amount. And that's it for today's video. If you made it this far, thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Bye!